Father, we are available tonight, God. Speak to us tonight. Use Pastor Caleb to speak into our lives, God. Give us the wisdom to understand what he is going to preach tonight, Father. Soften our hearts and open our ears, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, you can go ahead and be seated. Come on, give it up for the worship team. Let's go. Y'all can do better than that. All right, tonight is a little bit of a different service, but we are truly, truly blessed because we have an amazing, amazing preacher in the house tonight. I have heard this man preach about 10 times when I was in middle school, and whoo, he's, he's got the Holy Spirit. And it is my pleasure to introduce Pastor Caleb Tedder. Come on. Yeah, can you stay right there for me, bro? Appreciate it. How you guys doing tonight? Oh, come on. I say, how are you doing tonight? Good, good, good. It's good to be back in the house. You can go ahead and start playing for me, bro. I want us to do something really quick. Uh, I don't know if you came tonight just for a fun night. I don't know if you came tonight because your parents dragged you here or your grandparents dragged you here. I don't know why you came. Uh, But I came tonight all the way from Atlanta because I believe God wants to meet some of you in the house tonight. I believe God wants to touch some of your lives tonight. So here's what we're going to do. Before I came here tonight, I felt the Lord lay on my heart that there's some people that need prayer and there's some people that need some breakthrough before we go into anything else. I felt the Lord in time of prayer today say that there's maybe, I felt like he said a young lady, maybe a couple of young ladies, maybe even some young men, um, that there's been something kind of grieving your heart regarding your, your mom, your dad, your parents. I don't know if it's their relationship I don't know if it's your relationship with them, but I just felt the Lord say that there was somebody who you've been, it's even kind of kept you up at night. You've been catching yourself kind of crying about there's something, I couldn't pinpoint what it is, but there's something with the relationship with either your parents together or your relationship with your parents, and it's breaking you your heart. It's causing you to cry. Um, it's causing you to just, man, you can't even sleep at moments because it's just hurting you that much. Um, if that's you, I believe tonight the Lord wants to bring breakthrough to your heart and the Lord wants to bring breakthrough to your spirit. So here's what we're going to do, because uh, they may be a little shy about this, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with this. Uh, but can we, clo- can we bow our heads and kind of close our eyes and just be a little respectful for a moment? I'm going to ask you to be respectful for a moment. We're going to jump right into the message in just a second. But if that's you... If you say, Pastor Caleb, that's me. Even if, I know I said, uh, I felt like the Lord said it was a, a young lady, but even if it's a young man, that's okay too. If that's you, if you're saying there's something going on with the relationship with my parents, whether it be you with them or their relationship together and it's scaring you, it's breaking your heart, there's something hurting you about it. Uh, I believe God wants to bring breakthrough to you tonight. If that's you, with every head bowed and every eye closed, can you just lift your hand on the count of three and just look up at me? And when we make eye contact, you can just put your hand and your head right back down on the count of three. If that's you, one, two, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is no shame. There is no shame. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, wow, wow. A lot more than I expected. A lot more than I expected. I don't want to take too long, but here's what I want to do. How many leaders, if you're a leader, can you raise your hand? How many leaders do we have in the room? Okay, we got quite a few. Awesome, awesome. If you if you were one of the students that just put your hand up and looked at me, can you do something bold tonight? There's no shame in this. We all need prayer. We all have things we go through. Can you right now stand up and just come forward? I know you may be like your heart's about to beat out of your chest, but if that's you, can you come do that? We just want to pray for you. So can you go ahead and stand up and come forward? There's no shame. Come on. About 20 of y'all raised your hand. Yeah. Come on, sweetheart. Come on. Who else? Who else was with them? Yeah. Yeah. Come forward. There's no shame. There's absolutely, you guys can come forward just a little bit more. If I could have some leaders come get behind them. We just want to pray for just a moment. There's no shame in this at all. We all go through things. We all have things we deal with. And the Lord cares about you. If, if, you, if you're one of the students, look at me. The Lord cares about you enough that today in my hotel room, he spoke to me about you. Think about that. The creator of the universe loves you so much that today he spoke to me about you. He loves you, bro. He loves you so much that if you knew how much he loved you, it would blow your mind. If you knew how much he actually cared. What's your name? Halen. Halen, Halen, if you knew how much God cared about you, you wouldn't 
you would just, you'd be speechless because he loves you. Everything you've been through, everything that's been done to you, even if, maybe as a child, God loves you. He was there. And God wants to break through to you tonight. God wants to restore some things in your life. Do you believe he can do it? I believe he can because you know why? I, he did it in me. You, sweetheart, I, there's something on you. And I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, I can see it. You're like, and that's okay. Can we have a, uh, yeah, thank you, Rebecca. I just believe the Lord wants to do something so mighty in your heart, and all of your hearts tonight. So here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to try to quickly go and lay my hands on you and pray, and then we're going to move. But leaders, this is why I called you up here, because there's nothing special about me. It's the Lord. So let's just pray. And if you're sitting out there, um, can you stretch your hands this way and not be distracted by anything, but can you just pray that God would send breakthrough? Jesus, we thank you right now that, God, there would be breakthrough over every single person, every, every young lady, every young student, every young man up here, God, that is dealing with something with their parents. God, we thank you that there is breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, God, that you are moving in their hearts right now. Jesus, that you are touching them right now. Father, that something is happening. God, as we stand in this room and pray, and we declare by the power of God breakthrough over their life, God, we just thank you in the name of Jesus that wherever their parents are, that breakthrough is coming to the situation. God, I thank you for stepping in a situation that has seemed to be broken for far too long, that it seems like there's no hope. But God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. God, that breakthrough is coming to their hearts. Breakthrough is coming to this relationship. God, breakthrough is coming to these situations. Father, we thank you. God, that you're moving in every situation in this house tonight. God, that when they go home tonight, there's going to be something different. There's going to be something unique, and that's the power of the Lord. And God, we just thank you in the name of Jesus for moving in every single one of these situations and bringing restoration, bringing healing. I declare it in the name of Jesus that restoration and healing will fall over every single one of these students up here, God, and over their parents. God, I thank you for breakthrough in the name of Jesus. We thank you ahead of time. We thank you, Lord, that you're about to do something supernatural. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. You can take your way back, make your way back to your seat. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, leaders, for helping me with that. I just felt that really, really urgently. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, you're good. You can take a seat now. Thank you. You guys doing good? Oh, come on. I heard one person, my worshiper up front. I saw you, girl. Are you guys doing good? Yeah. Praise the Lord. We want to jump right in. We want to jump right in. If you have your Bibles, uh, whether it be, you know what's really funny is I just saw about half of y'all reach inside of your pockets <laughs> to grab your phones. That's awesome. Go ahead and grab your phones. If you got your Bible on your phone, grab your phone. Uh, if you got your Bible that is made out of paper, go ahead and grab that as well. I want you to go to the Old Testament, uh, the book of First Samuel. First Samuel tonight, <clears throat> chapter 8. And we're going to jump right in. I don't have long tonight. Uh, I came with an assignment tonight that I want to, I want to read some scripture to help you understand some things tonight. Um, and, and, I, and I do something a little different. I do this back home uh, just to give you a quick, uh, like, resume, I guess, of who I am. Just in case you don't know, I'm, I'm nobody necessarily crazy special. But, man, I just, I'm just a young man that loves the Lord and uh, that God has totally wrecked my life. I used to come back here. Uh, I used to come here and preach. Uh, in the JV, JV service, uh, uh, and, and I, I see some of you that look familiar, some of you don't look too familiar, maybe you're new, or maybe you've just grown up, and that's really awesome, uh, but my name is Caleb Tedder, I am only 23 years old, I live up in Atlanta, Georgia, hey, 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 I live up in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, I'm engaged, about to be married in about five and a half months, come on, give me, can you give me something for that, yeah, yeah, I put a ring on it, I put a ring on it. Her name is Melissa Williams and is about to be Melissa Tedder. Can I get an amen? amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, it's super good. To, are we live stream? We're live streaming. Pastor Dusty, if you're watching, I love you. Is this the camera right here? I love you, man. I love you so much. Y'all don't know how blessed you are to have Pastor Dusty and Pastor Brittany as your youth pastors. I'm telling you, man. Bro, bro, you don't even know. You don't even know. But, man, they're so great. So, hey, something I do back home, 
and I want to move really quickly, is um, can you stand up on your feet really, really quickly? I'd like to do something, and maybe you've seen this before, uh, where we'll stand for the reading of God's word, uh, so we can just kind of honor that, stand in honor of that. So we're going to read this. We're going to read 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 1 through 9. Then we're going to jump all the way to verses 19 through 20. Same chapter, same chapter. It says this. When Samuel grew old, he appointed his sons as Israel's leaders. The name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second was Abijah. Sorry if I said that wrong. And they served at Beersheba. But his sons did not follow his ways. They turned aside after dishonest gain and accepted bribes and perverted justice. Verse 4, so all the leaders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, you are old and your sons do not follow your ways. Now appoint a king to lead us, such as all the other nations have. But when they said this, give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord. And the Lord told him, listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king, as they have done from the day I brought them up out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so they are doing to you. Now listen to them, but warn them solemnly, and let them know what the king who will reign over them will claim as his rights. Now let's jump down. To verse 19 and 20. Uh, Verses 10 through 18, Samuel looks at the people of Israel and kind of tells them all this stuff that's going to happen. That, hey, if you get a king, it's going to take this. He's going to take this. He's going to take this. And by the end of it, he says, you'll be his slave. You will be a slave to this king. And then we get to verse 19. But the people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said. We want a king over us. Then we will be like all the other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our battles. Lord, we love you. God, I pray you would open hearts and let open heaven fall over this place. God, let it not be me speaking, but Holy Spirit, would you speak through me? We love you. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. You can take a seat. You can take a seat. I have a question really quick. Have you ever felt like you didn't fit in? Have you ever? Yeah, well, just a show of hands. Have you ever felt like you didn't fit in somewhere? Have you ever felt like you were kind of like you were the outcast, like you were the, you were the misfit? Yeah, like, like nobody understands me. I feel different than everybody else in the room. I feel like there's something about me. I know like people are talking to me. I know people are hanging out with me, but there's, I just feel different. Does anybody say, can anybody say that there's been a moment, at least one moment in my life where I have just felt different? I just felt, yeah, 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 that's a, there's no shame in that. We've all probably felt that at some point or another. And the title of my message tonight is, a matter of fact, just that very thing, I'm different. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, I'm different. Look at the other neighbor you rejected and say, I'm different. Say it, say it like you believe it, I'm different. Yeah, 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 say it with a little sass, I'm different. Because the truth of the matter is, listen, listen, the truth of the matter is, is you are different. The truth is, is that you are different. I came, if you've been wondering, am I different or not, I came to just let you know right now, you are different. There is something different about you, that when you walk in the room, that feeling you feel, it is, it is true, but it may not be true in the sense that you think it's true. Because while I don't know each and every one of your callings or your future or what God's going to do in each and every one of your lives or what he's already done, One thing I do know about every single one of us in the room is we all have one calling that is the same. We all have one purpose that is the same. And that purpose, that calling is to live for God, to be a true follower of Jesus Christ, to be a disciple of Jesus and live for him. But the the issue is this. The issue is that many of us, while that is all of our callings, there are some of us that, or there have been moments that, we aren't living in that calling. We're choosing to live how we want to live. We're choosing to live the way that we desire to live. And uh, can I be honest? I get it. I- I've been there. I understand the-, the wanting to fit in. I understand the, the cool factor of it. I-, I get it. But at some point or another, there may have been a moment, or maybe some of you in here right now can say that that's me. I'm, I'm actually really not living how the Bible, God has told me to live. 
the question kind of becomes, why do we do this? Maybe we want to be rebellion, or rebellious. Maybe we don't really understand it. And I think for some of us, I think for some of us, the reason we don't live how God has called us to live is because maybe there's some pain attached to something in our life that has to do with church or someone that called themselves a Christian. And there's some sort of pain. There's some sort of heartbreak. There's some sort of hurt that has caused us to say, I really don't want to do anything with that. And for many of us, we deal with this hurt and we deal with this pain because we don't want anything to do with this, with maybe with the Bible, maybe with the Word of God. I know, I know you may be in church, but that doesn't mean you're actually a true follower of Jesus Christ. I know you may be sitting in a church right now, but that doesn't mean that you've actually surrendered your life to Him. And I'm not trying to be harsh, but I just want to be honest with you. That doesn't mean that. And maybe it's because of some hurt or pain you've experienced. But the very first thing I want you to understand tonight is, or I want to say to you tonight is, don't let your pain remove you from your purpose. Don't let that pain remove you from your purpose. What do I mean? Israel in this story is living their life, and the prophet Samuel has now come to an old age, and he has appointed his two sons to be the next priest. This was an honor. I can't go into detail because of time's sake of how how much of an honor this was, but his two sons have now been appointed to be the next priest because Samuel is at an age where he's really old. But the Bible says in verse 3 that his sons did not follow the ways of Samuel, of being righteous, being holy, being blameless. But they turned aside after dishonest gain and accepted bribes and perverted justice. They used the priesthood or what we would consider a pastor to do nothing but be selfish and get these dishonest gains and basically kind of win them some status, maybe win them some wealth, maybe win them something. They didn't use it for the right reasons. And this bothers Israel. This bothers the elders of Israel. And so they gathered all together and went to Samuel and said, we want a king. Up until this point, Israel had not had a king. The person that led Israel, the person that governed Israel, the person that fought as a king would fight for his country, the person who fought for Israel was God himself. God was their king. And so Israel gets upset. The Israelite leaders, the elders, decide they want a king because Samuel's sons have treated the priesthood like this was just their way of making money. And so they choose to disregard God as their king, and they want an earthly king. And many of us have been hurt in some way, shape, or form, maybe by somebody in the church, maybe just in general, in the church or not in the church. And many of us have been hurt and have been dealing with a pain for so long that it causes us just not to want anything to do with God. I came for a specific thing tonight. Because there's something inside of us that when we get hurt, it causes us to want to shelter up and not want anything. It causes us want to want to isolate and not want anything to do with anybody else that can really possibly bring us true help or the Lord who can actually help us for real. And so Israel is in this place where they want an earthly king. They want a man instead of God to be their king. And I don't know who hurts you, but what you need to understand is that just because they hurt you and just because they mishandled something in your life, I want to I help you out, does not mean that God is going to. Just because an earthly, a man or a woman in your life hurts you does not mean God is going to. I know sometimes it's hard to see that. I know sometimes it's hard to believe it, but I promise you, God cares for you. While Samuel's sons mishandled and mistreated Israel, God never did. God was faithful. God cared for them. God made a way for them the whole time. And I'm not, look, I'm not trying to say ignore your hurt or ignore your pain or ignore your problem. If you're in a place of constantly being hurt emotionally, physically, uh, like any, any sort of abuse, you need to let Pastor Dusty or one of the leaders know. I'm not trying to say just to ignore the pain or the problem, but some of us have unforgiveness. Some of us have bitterness, roots deep down of bitterness where just because they hurt me, I don't want anything to do with them. I don't want anything to do with them. What I'm saying is in spite of someone hurting you, learn to trust Jesus anyways. Learn to release the pain to the Lord anyways. Because the longer you may hold on to this pain, the longer you hold on to this hurt, 
the more you may just remove yourself from the purpose that God has for you, which is to be his, which is to love him, which is to be with him, which is to follow him. The longer you hold on to this bitterness, the longer you keep yourself out of God's greatest blessings for you. As long as you allow that bitterness, that unforgiveness to stay. So don't let your pain remove you from your purpose. God always was there for Israel. He was always there for Israel. He brought them out of Egypt. He made ways in the desert. He gave them water and food in literally a dry wasteland, a desert where there was no food, there was no water. God supernaturally, go read it in the Word. It's truth. It's an actual story. It's actually happened that God made a way in the desert for Israel. He made a way. He protected them. He defeated their enemies for them. God always made a way. But Israel, the elders of Israel in this moment, instead of going to Samuel the prophet or going to the Lord, they choose to walk right past the obvious answer, which is the Lord, and go and say, we want an earthly king. We don't want anything to do with this. And look, it's, it's so easy can I, can I be honest? It's so easy to do this. It's so easy to get to a place where you say, look, I'm just so hurt. I'm just going to try to make it on my own because maybe that trust is broken. Maybe there's somebody in your life, a, a, a mom, a dad, a, a sibling, a, a friend, a, a teacher, somebody in your life, a grandparent, aunt, uncle, that has broken you so much that you just don't trust anybody. That it's just hard. It's hard to even believe anything you will say to me. It's hard to actually take you at your word. I, I can't trust anything because this pain is so deep. They choose to walk right past the very obvious answer, which is the Lord. And they say they want an earthly king. And our response is often that I'm just going to leave this behind and do me. Come on, has that ever been your response? I'm just going to do me. I don't care what you do, but I'm going to do me. I don't care what you say, I'm going to do me. Can I, can I be honest with you? You, your you is not better than God. You will, and the harsh reality is because I lived this out. I lived this out as an 18, 19, 20-year-old. I lived this out that I tried to do me in a lot of ways. I tried to handle things on my own in a lot of ways. And I was never able to handle anything better than God handled it for me. I was never able to really get a grasp on this thing. So please don't allow the mistakes of one person to change your heart and your life, the life you live for Jesus. Please don't allow that pain. He's the greatest and most caring person you will ever know. And I promise you, if you choose to live it on your own, you'll be missing out. You'll miss out on the greatest blessing that you'll ever receive, Christ himself. You'll miss out on the greatest thing you'll ever know. I'm not talking blessings and just money. Yeah, he can provide finances. He just did it for me last week in a, in a crazy way. But greater than the finances he's ever provided. Greater than my fiance. Greater than my job. Greater than anything I've ever known. And I have a great family. I love my family. I love my life. God has been so, so good to me. But greater than any of that, he's the greatest blessing I've ever had. Just to sit in his presence. Oh, if you only knew what it was like just to sit in his presence. Just, just to sit there and not move and you just hear him whisper to you. You feel him walk up to you. And many of you know what I'm talking about. Many of you have experienced that. And so the longer you choose to live in that pain, the longer you choose to pull yourself, push yourself out of the greatest blessing. Now, your pain can also be a learning tool, and God's not going to abandon you in your pain. I'm not trying to say that. But I just want you to understand that if, you'll, if, if you choose to remain in this pain, you may miss out on something. And all the while, God's standing right here saying, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. I'm, I, if, you would just, if you would just take my hand, if you would just call my name, I got you. So the greatest th mistake you can make is to choose to try to do it on your own and not allow the Lord to help you. And so Samuel prays to the Lord because, because check this out, Israel was upset and they went and tried to do it on their own. Give us an earthly king. Samuel, the Bible says that Samuel was displeased by what their request was. And instead of trying to figure it out on his own, 
Samuel goes and prays. Just a quick little nugget. It's not much of this in my notes, but just a quick little nugget. Anytime you're dealing with emotional pain or your, your feelings and you want to try to figure it out on your own, but please, before you take one step of trying to do it on your own, just pray. Just open the word. Hit up your youth pastors. Hit up your youth leaders and say, hey, this is the issue. This is what I want to do. Will you help me? Will you pray with me? Because if you try to do it on your own and it doesn't align with the word of God, you're just leading yourself into destruction more and more. And it's hurting you more and more. So number one, don't let your pain remove you from your purpose. Number two, say number two. Because you have to understand the enemy will lead you to the wrong place. If you try to do it on your own, the enemy will lead you to the wrong place. So number two, the alternative is worse than where you are now. Trying to figure this thing out on your own. Trying to do it on your own and just, I'm going to make it happen. It's worse than where you are now. Unless you're figuring it out as I'm going with the Lord. I'm going to let the Lord guide me. I'm going to let the Lord direct me. You trying to figure out your pain and trying to figure out this thing on your own and do it by yourself without the help of your youth pastors or without the help of Jesus and his word. It's, it's worse than where you are now. From personal experience. It's worse trying to figure out how to, get, how to get rid of the pain, trying to figure out how to pull the knife out of my back on my own. And guess what? Every time I tried to pull it out, I didn't do anything. It just stayed there. The blood just kept running down. If you try to figure it out on your own, the alternative of trying to do it on your own is worse than the pain you're in now. And because of the actions of Samuel's sons, Israel as a nation decided to ask for a human king to rule over them rather than God, just like the other nations. Maybe many of us have decided we are going to live our lives how we want, despite how God says to. Because, you know, it's cool. Like, everybody else is doing this. Everybody else is listening to this. Everybody else is watching this. Everybody else is smoking this. Everybody else is drinking this. Everybody else is doing this. It, it, everybody else is doing it, so it's, it's cool. This is what I'll run to. This is what I'll go to because it's cool. Everybody else is doing it, and I, and I want to fit in. I feel different, but I, I want to fit in. I want to be known. I want to be a part of the crowd. Everybody else is doing it. But please, let's look at the other nations. Let's look at the other nations. Israel said, give us a king like the other nations. Let's look at the other nations. Number one, the other nations were idol worshipers. They did not worship the Lord. They worshiped false gods, gods that were not real. They worshiped false idols. And, and because of that, you have to understand that these nations were not chosen by God. These nations were not chosen, so therefore they were actually rejected by God. And many of these nations, God would go before Israel in battle and win them victory. So therefore these nations would be destroyed because of their ongoing sin. Because they didn't have a thing with the Lord. Because they were living in sin. Because they were rejected. They were not chosen by God. So Israel wants to be like nations that are rejected by the Lord. Tell me what sense that makes. That many of us have stepped into a place of I'm going to do this like everybody else. I'm going to do this. I know I, I, the Bible may say it's not, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm going to do it. Anyways, but it's not what God has in store for you. So please understand the alternative, a life without the Lord, a life in sin, a life by yourself without Jesus is worse than the pain you're experiencing now. The, the other nations were different than where Israel was, but the difference was that they, were, they lived a life without God. They lived a life without God. It's easy to desire to be like everyone else and live and look like everyone else, but all the while they're living and posting and, and doing life without God. I know it looks cool. I know it looks awesome. I know it looks dope. I know, I know they got 100 likes on Instagram and you only get 17. I get it. I get it. I know they got a bunch of comments and you only get a comment from your grandma who doesn't even know how to use Instagram. I get it. I get it. I get it. Get you in the inner circle. I get it. Get you sitting at a lunch table at school. I get it. But their life is a life without the Lord. And I'm not trying to hate on them. We want them to come to know the Lord. We want them to receive salvation and, and for their life to be turned around. But I'm just speaking to you that in your pain, don't run to the alternative because the alternative is worse than where you are now. God's plan for Israel was protection and safety, healing and provision, salvation to be their God. And Israel's reality without God was that the king would take half of their possessions and they would become the slaves of the king. If you don't believe me, go read 1 Samuel uh, chapter 8, verses 10 through 18. 
But my third thing is this, because to choose yourself or the culture over Jesus is to rob yourself of the greatest blessings you'll ever know, which is Jesus. And I'm about to end it right here. So if the piano player, the worship team, if you could go ahead and come back up, we're going to move quickly. Number three, your acceptance of one thing is your rejection of the other thing. Your rejection, your acceptance of one thing is your rejection of the other thing. Quick poll. Who likes Chick-fil-A? Raise of hands. So good. So good. Quickly, quickly. Who likes the chicken sandwich? All right, put your hands down. All right, if you raised your hand, I, I, you, can't, you can't vote twice. Um, who likes the chicken nuggets? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, check this. Check this. The, some of you voted for the chicken sandwich. Some of you voted for the chicken nuggets. If you voted for the chicken sandwich, if you accepted the chicken sandwich, that means you rejected the chicken nuggets. If you, re, if you, if you accepted and voted for the chicken nuggets, you, you rejected the chicken sandwich. Because... One, I'm talking about on this poll right here. Now, I'm not saying you can't go, like, ever get chicken nuggets or chicken sandwich again. Don't, don't think of it that deep. But what I'm trying to say is this. In this poll, in this moment right now, you can only have one or two options. And so, therefore, your acceptance of one thing was your rejection of the other. So Israel's acceptance of having an earthly king was their rejection of having God as their king. Every moment you choose to live for yourself and you choose to sin, you are accepting the evil of the world and you're rejecting the blessings and promises and you're rejecting God as your king. You're rejecting you, you're rejecting yourself from stepping into a place of healing, a place of breakthrough. Every, and I'm not trying to be condemning. I'm not trying to be condemning. I get what it's like to deal with addiction. I promise you, I get what it's like to deal with sin. I get what it's like to deal with those things. But every moment you accept one thing, you're rejecting another. You're rejecting another. And so Israel accepts the fact that we want an earthly king instead of God as our king. And the question becomes, is God not enough? Is the one that made a way not enough, Israel? Is the one that provided, is the one that was with you through thick and thin, is that not enough? And many of us have to ask ourselves that question. I'm going to go ahead and let you know he's more than good enough. He's more than good enough. And we're coming to a close right here. So number one, don't let your pain remove you from your purpose. You're called to be a child of God. And I understand it's hard. I know sometimes you want to, be, you want to fit in. You want to, you want to be known. You want to be popular. But two, the alternative is worse than where you are now. Number three, your acceptance of one thing is your rejection of another thing. And so why would they reject the Lord? Because their eyes were, were focused on the wrong thing. You should make sure that your, your eyes are focused on Jesus. But they, after, after Samuel explains everything, of, if you want a king, this is what it means. They're going to take this, they're going to take this, they're going to take that, they're going to take your servants, your cattle, your goats, they're going to take your sons for this, they're going to take your daughters for this, and get, basically by the end of it, you're going to be slaves to them. This is what it means if you want a king. If you want to reject the Lord, this is what it means. And I preached all of that to get right here. Because in their pain, in their upset, being upset, in their frustration, they choose to reject the Lord. And they choose to want an earthly king. And they say it twice. Now appoint a king to lead us. This is verse 5. Such as all the other nations. If you skip to verse 19, after Samuel explains everything, but the people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said. We want a king to come over us. Verse 20, then we will be like all the other nations with a king to lead us, to go out before us, to fight our battles. We will look, we will be like all the other nations. Here's the thing, Israel. You weren't called to be like all the other nations. You're not supposed to look like all the other nations. You were handpicked. You were chosen back to Abraham. You were chosen to be God's, the living God. You were chosen to be his people. These people don't have God on their side. You, you're not supposed to look like them. And I understand there's pain in your heart. I'm speaking to you. I understand there's moments where you want to give up. I understand there's moments where it gets really difficult. 
I understand they did something. I know they broke your heart. I'm not trying to deny it. I know it feels like they took your heart and ripped it and threw it there and threw that there and threw that there. I know it feels like that. And I've, I've felt it. I've, I've been betrayed. I've been stabbed in the back by people that said they would never leave me, never hurt me. I'm not talking about like they just said they would show up to something and didn't come to Chick-fil-A to have lunch with me. I'm talking about where the relationship was almost through. I'm talking about where family members have hurt me. I understand what it's like to be promised one thing by somebody that you would give your life for. And they reject you. And they break your heart. Can I, can I be real with you? I understand what it's like to be cheated on. I understand what it's like to have a family member rip your name. It feels like they rip your name into pieces. And all, all the while you're, why did, I, why did this happen? I don't understand it. I didn't, I didn't do anything. I understand the pain. I understand what it's like to cope with the pain, to run to something sinful. I understand what it's like to smoke it. I understand what it's like to drink it. I understand what it's like to watch it. I understand what it's like to hang out with it. I, under, I promise you I understand. I understand you're trying to cope with it. But all along, while you accepted this one thing, you rejected the true thing because I, I, I'm in pain, but I need to fit in. I'm in pain, but, and I know, I know this, I'm dealing with this, but I need to be accepted. And so Israel wants to be accepted to look like all the other nations, but Israel... You're not supposed to look like them. God brought me here from Atlanta tonight to tell you, you may be dealing with something, you're walking into pain, you may be dealing with heartbreak, and you may be coping with it through a sinful thing that's rejecting the Lord, and you're saying, I just feel so different. I, I just feel like I'm an outcast. I feel like I'm a misfit. That's exactly what you are. Not in a bad way, but you have been chosen by the living God to be to be set apart to look different you're not supposed to look like anybody else if you call yourself a Christ follower if you call yourself a Christian you're not supposed to look like anybody else you're not supposed to look like the rest of the world as a citizen of heaven you are to look and live a certain way this is not referring to the style of your clothes or anything like that this is referring to the character of your heart and your spirit and your mind that I'm not going to live in sin I'm not going to live for myself I'm not going to live like the rest of the world, like the culture, like they say on Instagram, like Hollywood says to live. No, 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 no. I've been bought at a price. And I'm dealing with pain. And I'm going through this thing. And it's easy. Oh, it's so easy to run and cope with something else besides the Lord. But you were called to look different. And I felt this so strongly when Pastor Dustin asked me to come preach. That you are called as a youth ministry that you are called as individuals, as a leadership team, this goes for you. You are called to look different. You are called not to fit in with the rest of the world, but you are called to stand as men, men and women of righteousness, men and women of holiness, men and women of purity, to walk and live a blameless life before the rest of the world. So stand, come on, let's stand up to our feet. We're about to close. We're about to close really quickly. We're about to close really quickly. Because I know maybe some of you got school or you need to get home. But if tonight you say, Pastor Caleb, I want to be marked by the presence of the Lord. Tonight, Pastor Caleb, what you've said has just struck me to the core that I want to be marked by the presence of God. I want to be marked marked by his power, by his love, because I've tried to fit in, but I just feel something on the inside of me that when I get around my friends at school, I just feel different. It's because you are. You're not, you're not supposed to look like the rest of the nations. You're not supposed to look like those who are watching pornography and those who are, are smoking it or drinking it or that are spreading rumors or lying or talking trash or getting in fights. You're not supposed to look like the rest of the world as a Christ follower. This is not me trying to be condemning to the rest of the world. We want to pray. We want to go and reach the lost. But as a Christ follower tonight, I came to let you know you're supposed to look different. 
So on the count of three, if that's you, and there's no shame, this is not a night to play games. We're going to quickly pray, and I need my leaders to help me. We're going to quickly pray that God will mark you with boldness to live for Jesus and be different for him. So if that's you, on the count of three, I want you to quickly, I mean quickly, make your way down to the front. And I want my leaders to pray with me. And if that's you on the count of three. You say, Pastor Caleb, I want to look different. I'm going to stand here today and choose to look different. No matter what anybody else says, no matter what they've done, I'm going to look different. If that's you on the count of three, come down forward. One, two, three. If that's you, come down now. Don't wait, don't wait, don't wait. Leaders, go ahead and make your way down here. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on. So we're going to sing. Come on. Why don't you lift this up and sing? Come on. If you came down, sing. I'm about to hand the mic back over. Come on, can you pray for a moment? I'm sorry. I just felt the Lord do this. Can you pray? Can you pray? I want to make sure we're not leaving anything unchecked. I know we need to go home. I know it's 9 o'clock, but we need to make sure nothing's left unchecked. 
Come on, keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Come on, keep praying. We're about to dismiss. moving sing that Pastor Caleb, thank you, for mo- thank you for being patient. The Lord is moving. We're about to dismiss. I love you. I hope you know that. I love you so much. I'm praying for you. As I leave tonight, I'm praying for you. I'm, praying, I'm keeping you in your prayers. Here's what it means to be different. Here's what it means. It means to surrender your life to the Lord, to give your life to Jesus completely, to no longer live for yourself, to choose to live a holy, righteous, blameless life. Here's the great part. He gives you help. It's him, his word, him himself. It is your help. It is your help. It is your help every single day, every single day. So last thing, 
If you tonight say, Pastor Caleb, I've never even given my life to the Lord, but I want to surrender my heart completely to Jesus. If that's you, quickly on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. If you're saying, I've never given my life to the Lord, I, I won't leave without without just checking. I want to make sure. If you're saying, I've never given my life to the Lord and received forgiveness and salvation, I want to do that tonight. Raise your hand. I just want to double check. Praise the Lord. That's okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, hey, I love you. I don't know who I'm supposed to hand the mic off to. Look, you're different. You're not normal. That's good. If your difference is the Lord. If you choose to be different in the Lord, if you choose to say, I'm different, I'm not going to look like the rest of the world. I'm going to look like I'm marked by the presence of God. I'm going to live my life with Jesus and Jesus alone. That's good. I promise you. Don't walk away from it. I love you so much. Thank you so much for letting me come and speak to you. Love you guys. Amen, amen. Well, hey, y'all.